What's up, folk? Welcome back to another video here. Uh, I remember years ago, guys, when I was a little EU4 nooblet, and uh, I watched a video on Brandenburg. And the guy playing Brandenburg, um, it was the late game, and he was talking about how uh, for the longest time he had struggled in Europe, and uh, it was so worth it once he had overcome many of the obstacles with the elite Prussian ideas. And uh, I have to admit, guys, he owned a lot of Europe and he was really powerful. Um, but from a really sort of experienced player's perspective, depending on what you're trying to achieve, uh, it was not a very good game. Uh, but I didn't exactly know that at the time. Now, there has been an issue that I even talked about in the beginning of my Brandenburg sort of uh, playthrough where I, uh, Brandenburg really suffers from some uh, issues, including aggressive expansion, etc. And I played them recently because I kind of wanted to redeem myself because my Brandenburg series was a bit of a fail. And uh, I wanted to check with the new absolutism, which the Prussian government benefits from uh, quite well, with that 40% admin efficiency. Uh, just how far you could take a strong Brandenburg into Prussia, into Germany, uh, throughout the late game. And uh, if the limitations in the early game are actually going to uh, allow you still, as long as you do your best to overcome them, to, you know, conquer the world quite easily. And uh, I have to admit that having played them, I played a game up to sort of near, you know, uh, the early 1700s. Um, the answer is yes, in my opinion. I really think with that 40% admin efficiency, you can make absolute leaps and bounds in the late game nowadays. But what it is going to come down to is having the best and most optimized early game uh, that you can as Brandenburg. And that's what I'm going to hear uh, talk to you guys about. And uh, I hope that you guys enjoy this because it is the year 1500. And uh, hopefully this redeems me a little bit for those of you who um, were around for the Brandenburg playthrough. Um, this is the best Brandenburg that I have ever had at the year 1500, guys. I own uh, Hamburg Lubeck, as you guys can see. I mean, you can visualize what I own here. I am more than, I have everything required to form Prussia, and we're going to be able to do it as soon as we get that tech and change our religion. Uh, but what you might not be able to see is also my development um of course when you uh, are struggling with aggressive expansion you can develop your country and uh, keep in mind that these provinces are woods so it is fairly expensive to develop them um, but i have as you can see 15 20 20 20 uh, and then just a small amount of development around but those are the main provinces that i have developed I did develop some of these as well, a small amount. Uh, but yeah, that's a lot of development. And as you can see, I am a great power. I am the sixth most great power. And this is long before I only just unlocked my army morale. So we don't even have our uh, Prussian ideas yet. And um, yeah, a great power. So this is my personal best game ever as Brandenburg at this stage. Collecting 40% in Lubeck. 44% transferring through. This is without a navy, actually. I've got six cogs and 34% uh, from Saxony into Lubeck. I just uh, made my center of trade Lubeck and I'm collecting 13 more than I'm collecting from taxation here. And in fact, my economy is so high right now, so strong rather, that I actually intended to uh, utilize this theologian who is 50% cheaper in order to gain two additional admin points per turn because I wanted to talk about my previous game. Um, what I recommend you do and what I should have done at in that game where I went to the year 1700 was take religious ideas instead of innovative. Uh, innovative obviously is really nice. The, the main appeal, which is an even more... It is so strong for Brandenburg, guys, because... Um, it's the 20% infantry combat ability policy. Now, that has an accumulative effect with everything else that Brandenburg has, making their armies just so potent. But the other thing is the Prussian government type gives you plus three on your military leader's stats, which means statistically, it's usually going to be a six. If not that, it will be a five. And technically, 
the lowest it can be is a four, which is higher than average. Um, so they are just so uh, ideal for taking a, a military policy where you, you don't mind losing one military per month, because unless you're maybe trying to complete a military idea, uh, as long as you have your power projection high, um, you're just going to be rolling, especially if you can have a plus three advisor, you're just going to be rolling in military points all of the time. Uh, however, even though it is so strong, I recommend you take religious ideas, in fact, uh, because my strategy, I had in mind in my previous game that I wanted to do as well as I could possibly in the early game, so that in the late game I was poised and ready to basically take over the world, and the strategy that I devised is actually I allied Poland at the time, but because you can do that quite easily with Brandenburg, I managed to sneak um, what was required to form Prussia while maintaining Poland as an ally. And I went for France, Denmark, and uh, a North Italian. Now, in this game, there is no prominent North Italian at the moment. In my previous game, it was Milan was beginning to take over. And North Italians, guys, let me tell you, in the mid to late game, they can become extremely powerful. Uh, but my technique was to actually ally and surround the empire with strong allies so that when I uh, begin to expand aggressively with aggressive expansion and get that coalition you don't take a small expansion you take a massive expansion like much more than you I mean 100% overextension you know in Germany and then the coalition starts but the idea is you're so powerful by that time with your allies combined that you can just fight the coalition in Germany and just uh, expand and expand and expand and just eliminate the factions that are coalitioning you. Now, it worked well, except there was one major issue. And I thought I could get away with it because I thought I could just fabricate claims and I had would have the time, but it was the CB issue. Um, trying to utilize that technique a lot of these provinces are really high development, guys, uh, as the game goes on. And uh, they're all taking, you know, extra um, time to core. They're all taking uh, Diplo points to annex um, without having a CB. And uh, that is why when in doubt, they use Vault, basically, guys. I don't know what else to tell you. My plan is to do the same thing but to flip Protestant Holy War CB, which of course gives you 25% less aggressive expansion with the CB. And uh, that combined with the this here is going to allow me, that's it's 45% less. That's going to allow me to, as soon as I flip Protestant, I'm going to take a you know chunk and really um, keep my aggressive expansion maxed out. Uh, but moreover, though, it's going to allow me when I do go ham and crazy, I can take as many provinces as I, as I want from anybody in the war, and it's not going to cost those Diplo points. Uh, so this game, I used a different approach where I really wanted to go into Poland this time, and uh, I made sure to ally his enemy, which was Bohemia in the beginning of the game. So even though I'm doing very well here geographically, I'm very powerful. In fact, I am stronger than Bohemia myself, and that's without my ideas. Uh, he has managed to kind of block me off from a lot of the land that I otherwise would have taken because I was his ally and there's not much I could do about it. However, I have broken my alliance with him for a reason that I'll show you uh, shortly. And I just acquired Hungary as an ally here because I plan my idea is I'm going to do the same thing except I want to always have truce with Poland and Lithuania because I'm expanding into them and the uh the Deus Vault is going to be very nice for the same reason to take big chunks without worrying about Diplo there so I plan to just expand outwards like crazy have plenty of uh, room to expand into but Hungary is going to serve us well now I plan to actually attack Bohemia guys unfortunately he has the Ottomans as an ally but Hungary is rivaling the Ottomans, so I think there's no way the Ottomans should actually be able to get access through, and his diplomacy is pretty good, so I don't think he's at risk of the Ottomans just YOLO attacking him, guys. But the reason that I switched out Bohemia is because we share dynasty. Now, unfortunately, I acquired his dynasty, he didn't acquire mine, but he has a weak claim. I claimed his throne, and because he's got a weak claim... I feel like my odds are pretty good here. I broke alliance with him and my truce comes up in four years time. 
So his roller is 53. He could die, but I'd say we've got pretty good odds here. So if I could PU Bohemia, I definitely think I am stronger than him straight up already in terms of force limit. And we're only going to get uh, more. Uh, I have one Diplo slot free that will be used on him. Nowadays, with the ability to develop their provinces, he's got plenty of uh, farmlands, etc., that I could develop, and we're going to be able to keep him under control nicely. So this is kind of the dream game. <laughs> Hopefully, if I mean, if I get that PU, it will be the dream game. Uh, really enjoying myself. And let's just quickly go over the timeline, guys, because I want to give you guys some tips and tricks here before we end the video. Um, so just to be clear, the reason I'm showing you this video, guys, is because I really think it is a good time to believe be playing Brandenburg. I really think if you're a sort of moderate to high competent player uh, and you're a big fan of uh, doing a Brandenburg into Germany run, this is the time to do it, dude, because it, in my opinion, it's very really enjoyable. And uh, if you do well... I mean, the late game can be a breeze. It can be a breeze. It can be enjoyable taking huge chunks of land and actually uh, conquering the world. Like in the past, without the absolutism, uh, it was much harder and much more tedious to do. Um, so with that being said, I want to get into the um, timeline here really quickly. Now, I don't do anything here. Of course, I am doing things immediately, but it takes a while here. You can see that... Uh, Mecklenburg got wrecked. I'm pretty much doing the same starter that I did, guys, in my um, Humiliate Rival CB video. Very similar. I went into uh, Magdeburg, went into Mecklenburg. Pomerania attacked Mecklenburg because I was attacking him. And next him, he was released by the Empire because it's just such a good strategy. That's where a lot of my development and my power projection comes from. And uh, notice that Pomerania expands. Now, Poland goes into the Teutonic Order, and Pomerania attacks him as well while he's being attacked. Uh, I take these two provinces because they had no allies. They went in a trade league, free provinces I went into. I had truces with other factions, and I was um, rivaling Pomerania. Now, the Teutons actually reversed the war on Pomerania, annexing all of this and uh, returning this to Mecklenburg. At this stage, guys, this was the dream. If I could give you any advice in terms of managing aggressive expansion, it would be for, look for opportunities to reconquest. Even small opportunities, like these are not very high development provinces, guys, but do not underestimate it because I um, go in here against Pomerania and I vassalize him because he has core on Rostock and all of the Pomeranian provinces here to be fed back with reconquest. And this war against the Teutonic Order, he's allied with Mecklenburg and I return all the core in one war. It was worth 10 aggressive aggressive expansion now that was the same amount as just straight up annexing magdeburg the same amount of aggressive expansion for one province and magdeburg is not a high developed province either guys it's only like seven at the beginning of the game so highly recommend to look out for a uh, reconquest i actually had that in mind going into this game but what i plan to do is Poland goes in against the Teutons. Nowadays, they only take these two provinces. I don't know why. It's all they take every time, it seems. I plan to go in against Pomerania and then wait until he started his second war with the Teutons. When he was doing the work for me, I wanted to ninja, you know, however many provinces, maybe three provinces, so that Poland would annex him and then I would um, vassalize what remains. Excuse me. I intended to actually use the reconquest here a tremendous amount of land against Poland. That was my uh, plan, but things things changed here because I was worried at this point about liberty desire and the Teutons had expanded massively. So I vassalized Pomerania, reconquested him, and uh, there's actually not that much more. Like, I'm obviously not that large. It's pretty self-explanatory what I uh, did do. I ended up annexing Magdeburg when my truce was up. And... Uh, I also start a war, so there we go, and, oh, this was really hilarious, I thought, guys, um, when I was fighting the Teutonic Order, Pomeranian rebels spawned, but I actually had given the occupation to Pomerania, so he wasn't fighting me while I was at war with the Teutonic Order, he walked into his lands and ended up being successful, and uh, flipped um, this province to Pomerania, who was my subject. That, I thought, was hilarious. I annexed uh, Magdeburg, and when I took Hamburg, who is a free city, it's always hard to break those, uh, I actually took it um, indirectly from fighting Lebec. I took I uh, separate pieced Hamburg out for a full annexation. Now, keep in mind, guys, it's been, what, over 20 years? It's been 21 years. I have taken three provinces here, 
and there's been some time for the aggressive expansion to diminish. I, I have the 20% reduced aggressive expansion, and the rest has been reconquest. I didn't even do that. Um, so this has been a very small amount of aggressive expansion, and it is only now-ish, I think, when I go into um, uh, Lebec, and see, I integrate that diplomatically. I go into Lebec, separate piece Hamburg, and annex Lebec, and uh, that is when, for the first time, my aggressive expansion is high. Just keep that in mind. It's been very low up until up until this point. But my influence in uh, the trading region here is a lot better. I was just collecting at this stage with a merchant, making a lot more money. Um, fighting another war against the Tudans. And I actually went in against Poland there, where I, I brought Bohemia and Denmark in once I had my favors. And uh, after our truce comes up, I just annexed uh, um, Mecklenburg. I go in against uh, Brunswick and Verdun. Pretty standard stuff. Uh, see, I thought it was funny. Verdun was in a trade league. He attacked Brunswick when I attacked him, so I allowed him to annex Hanover. As soon as he did that, he lost the trade league. I had already claimed this up. I went in against him immediately and annexed him as well. And uh, I take these provinces from Poland here, but that's actually a war from when Bohemia attacked Poland, you can see, and I separate pieced. Uh, breaking our trust a little bit, but I was going to betray him anyway. Um, the ties between Poland and Lithuania have been completely broken, and Lithuania did not back Poland up in that war, and uh, he's fighting another war, I think, with the Livonian Order here, and uh, I actually go in against him because he's my rival and he's free, and uh, I end up uh, fully annexing the Teutonic Order as well. So that's how we got where we were. I basically have only taken advantage of one nice reconquest, which I plan to do anyway with the Teutonic Order. So I think it, it, it is entirely possible that you guys can uh, simulate this kind of capacity. Um, as far as getting like a PU or anything like that, I don't know. But I just want to uh, show you guys some of the ideas that I have remaining. I'm going to be hiring this... Um, advisor like I said once I uh, make enough money to buy him out but if we look at our rivals here I'm rivaling oh no Munster became invalid no <laughs> damn it I didn't realize that Munster became an invalid rival I was going to show you guys a cheeky move that I wanted to do guys which was declare on Munster humiliate rival CB which of course I love doing nowadays and I was hoping that because he's only allied to Brabant uh, that that would uh, become the complete decline of Munster, and uh, where nations would jump in against him because he has been hated in this area. Apparently, he's got zero aggressive expansion now, so he's doing a good job stabilizing. Uh, but what I plan to do is have people collapse on him, have his enemies attack them, like Cologne, and uh, take back their land. And then I was actually, because I'm not taking anything from Munster, I'm confident that I can re-establish my relations with him, ally him up, etc., uh, influence nation, and actually diplo vassalize him, and then reconquest what remains. Now, although it might seem might seem a far cry from uh, reality, I did do exactly this in my previous game with uh, a neighbor here who had expanded, who was Cologne in that game. It is possible here, guys, that you can actually attack him with no intention to expand, but instead to uh, create a uh, you just you just sit on him and basically fracture him, wait for everybody to attack when his ally does no longer respond, and uh, yeah, then let them uh, each piece out, etc., uh, cripple him, and then actually diplo-vassalize, given some time, what remains, and then uh, therefore giving you reconquest on all of this land. So that's what I actually plan to do. But of course, also going against Bohemia if uh, for the uh, claim throne, I could truce break, um... But yeah, I don't feel like doing that. It's going to come down to me versus Bohemia. I don't think the Ottomans will give access. I will be able to get through. So it will be one large war. And uh, this will personally be my best Brandenburg game ever, I think. So I hope you guys enjoyed that random little video. And basically, in summary, play Brandenburg. Play Brandenburg because they're sweet. Uh, it's a good patch to play them in because they can absolutely own in the late game. Uh, the strategy is to focus on reconquesting as much as possible and allying people all around the empire to the best of your ability. And then once deciding you're going to be coalitioned and you want to expand, just be coalitioned and just expand more than you otherwise, otherwise would be and fight the coalition from here to Timbuktu by using Deus Vault and just 
Snowborn, 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 Annex, all of Germany. And I swear you can get it. Um, it requires admin tech 20 to form Germany. In my previous game, even when I felt uh, very limited by not having the, the Deus Vault CB, I was uh, waiting on my technology, which is actually the first time myself personally. Whenever I play Brandenburg, I usually even I've been extremely strong on occasions playing them, but it's usually like conquering Russia or something like that, and I actually lack the provinces to film Germany. My previous game uh, was the only game ever where I had dismantled the empire. I basically was Germany before I could form Germany. It was really cool. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.